This is everything you need to know on how to turn your iPhone into a professional photo and video camera. Not only will I go in depth on the settings, but I'll also go over the best practices to achieving ideal results, what editing apps I use, and the LUTs that I use to grade my ProRes videos. So let's go ahead and open up settings and scroll down to camera. Record video. I recommend 4K 30p or 4K 60p. I usually shoot 4K 24 with my dedicated cameras, but 4K 24 actually looks pretty awful from phones. It just looks really choppy. Enhanced stabilization? Yes. HDR video? Off. I like HDR videos, but not everyone will have an HDR display, and I don't want to limit my content to a small group of people. Auto FPS off. When it's turned on and we're in a low light situation, it will automatically default to 24p, and we definitely don't want that. We want our frame rate to stay consistent. Speaking of consistency, lock white balance. Absolutely yes. This is super important for video, especially when we shoot Apple ProRes Log. It helps us color grade easier in post because the color tones remain consistent throughout. Record slow motion and record cinematic. I tend not to use these. I usually use 4K 60p footage and slow it down by 50% if I want slow motion. And I would be editing in a 30p timeline in my editing app. And cinematic mode isn't really cinematic. I don't know why they call it that, but the fake digital blur still look like garbage to me. So bleh, no thank you. Moving on to formats. We're gonna go for high efficiency, photo mode 24 megapixels, and of course, Pro Raw and Resolution Control on with Pro Raw Max 48 megapixels. Now, 48 megapixel is a lot, but it gives us so much data to work with to manipulate our photos in editing so we can really push the colors and perform heavy cropping. In good lighting, the 48 megapixel RAW off the iPhone is almost identical to my full frame sensor Sony camera. Now, obviously, the 48 megapixel only applies to the main camera, the 1x 24 millimeter. The other lenses are gonna be RAW 12 megapixels, which is still really good, as you've seen from my review. Apple ProRes, yes, ProRes encoding log. Now this is game changing because essentially we're capturing color data similar to professional cinema cameras. Obviously at first the footage looks washed out, but it actually has a lot of color data hidden within for us to pull from. We can color grade the footage ourselves or apply a LUT, which is loosely like a filter that puts the flat footage into standard colors that we're used to seeing, and we can even manipulate it further from there to get film-like results. Not only that, but it doesn't have a lot of that iPhone processing where it tends to over sharpens our footage and well, make our videos look like iPhone videos. But don't get me wrong though, in great lighting situations, even normal iPhone videos look amazing. So you can only do ProRes log up to 4K 30p with the iPhone by itself. To do 4K 60p, you will need an external SSD. But I would highly recommend an external SSD in general if you plan on shooting log all the time, because even at 4K 30p, the file sizes are gonna be massive. And later, I'll go over the LUTs that I use and another camera app that will save you space when shooting ProRes Log. For now, we're gonna hammer out the rest of the settings here. Come back out to preserve settings. This is so the camera does not reset itself to its default settings every time we leave and reopen the app. So camera mode, definitely on. Macro mode, this has to be on because it's incredibly frustrating that it always auto switches to macro mode whenever I get too close to something when I try to frame my shots. But don't worry though, it'll still bring up the macro option when it detects an object being close to the camera so we can toggle it on if need be. Exposure adjustment on, and you'll notice that I always underexpose my photos and videos by negative 0.7. It helps me retain my highlight details rather than blowing them out. Especially with skies, we can easily lose details on a bright day, and pros avoid overexposed portions of the footage because it just looks unprofessional. Action mode, I left it off. Seldom do I use action mode, so I definitely don't want to accidentally leave it on and not be shooting in 4K. And you'll notice with enhanced stabilizations that we turned on earlier, the iPhone would do a great job smoothing out our footage in 4K. Pro Raw Resolution Control and Apple ProRes obviously on because that way it just keeps shooting Raw Max for photos and ProRes for videos. The last thing we want is we're capturing all these amazing things and it turns out they were in JPEG or regular video. And live photos, we are leaving that on. Use volume up for burst. I leave it off because I don't really burst with the iPhone. You can also drag the shutter button over if you want to burst as well. Coming down to composition, grid, yes, level, yes. These two here are insanely helpful for framing. Photographic style, not something I use. I tend to make my adjustments in another editing app. Main camera, I left everything as default and 24 millimeter at default. And the rest I left as is. I actually enjoy portraits in photo mode because it allows us to choose if we want a photo that we've already taken to be a portrait photo with the background blur. 
And I would be careful selecting an aperture wider than f4, just because in certain situations, the iPhone still don't do a really good job at cutting out our subject. So the blur can tend to look a little too fake. f4 to f4.5 would be the widest I go. And I think that's kind of the sweet spot. So let's go ahead and open up our camera app and go into photo mode. On the top right corner here, we have raw max, which we can turn on and off, which is nice because not every photo needs to be in raw. And we can also hold down and choose the different raw options. We can even go down to 12 megapixels raw if we find a 48 megapixel raw to be a little too much, which it can be if we're just spraying and praying. But there are a few things to keep in mind here. Number one, you cannot have live photos if you're shooting in raw. Live photos are great for everyday snapshots because you can actually choose a different frame frame as your key photo. Almost like you missed the moment by a few milliseconds, but in the album app, you can actually retroactively rewind or fast forward to the exact frame you want. So that's pretty cool. And number two, you cannot capture portrait mode data in raw. So if you want all of that raw data and still have some of that bokeh for your subject, what you can actually do is import the photos into Lightroom and take advantage of their new lens blur feature. And this feature is brand new. It literally just existed a few weeks ago as of late 2023. Coming over to the top left, flash is always off for me. I use it when I need to. Exposure adjustment, like I've mentioned earlier, I like to underexpose my photos and videos by negative 0.7. And of course, you can also tap and hold on the screen to lock focus and adjust your exposure as well if you need to. Now, if you press on the arrow in the middle right here, there are several options here to keep in mind. For aspect ratio, I like to keep it four by three. This takes advantage of the entire sensor and I can crop later if I need to. And the iPhones always make that process super easy and you can always revert that decision later. There's also a timer feature here that you can use if you place your photo down to take a group photo. One important thing is night mode. If it's dark enough, the camera app will automatically display the night mode option on the top left here. If you're hand holding the phone at max, it'll do a one second exposure, which can provide decent results. But if you have a tripod or you can prop the phone up somewhere, you have the option to go up to 30 second exposure, which means the iPhone can spend more time gathering in more light and give you a cleaner low light image. Now you may have heard this before, but never pinch to zoom in camera. What we would be doing is digitally zooming into our pixels and making our images and videos look fuzzier. Each of these options here on the screen are using the dedicated cameras on the back. So we're getting the best quality possible. Anything in between is not real. Well, with the exception of the 1.2, 1.5, and the 2X lenses, those are the only exceptions because it crops from the main camera, which is okay because it has enough megapixels where the crop doesn't look as bad, but don't zoom beyond 2X. At that point, it's better just to jump to the 3X or the 5X lens and just walk back. So let's talk about editing photos. In my opinion, the editing function in the album app is actually pretty darn good. There were a few photos I was struggling to get my colors right when I just opened up the raw DNGs in Lightroom. But when I tried doing the basic edits in the album app, I was able to achieve the colors that I wanted. Then I would send the photo to Lightroom and did my other types of editing like sky adjustments and masking to dehaze my mountains. So if you're struggling to get your colors right, I would say give that a try first. For the most part, I do recommend Lightroom for all of your editing needs. It is, however, a subscription based app App. It's $10 a month, but they have a couple of handy features that I personally like, like the lens blur feature that I talked about. That, and of course, is a powerful editing app. But what I also really enjoy about Lightroom is the community presets, which uses AI to analyze your photo and gives you some presets you can choose from to apply to your images. And I tend to use these presets as a starting base and continue making my adjustments from there to get the look that I want. As long as we shot the photo in RAW, of course. And coming soon, I will have a free iPhone photography guide that I'm putting together with my friend, Professor Hines, where we take you on a virtual photo walk on achieving amazing images with the iPhone, along with an in-depth photo editing tutorial. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Subscribe and follow us on social media so you know when it's going to be available. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the camera app again. And this time we're going to slide over to video mode. Again, starting from the top right, there's the option for action mode. You can turn it on if you need to, but we're going to leave it off for now. Next to it, we can cycle between HD and 4K and a different frame rates. 4K 60p is the default for me. Now, this is just if I want to capture regular videos. Now, you'll notice the moment we try to activate ProRes log, it will say ProRes is not supported. That's because for 4K 60p ProRes, we need to connect an external SSD. And I would highly recommend using one anyways, just because the ProRes ProRes files are way too massive. Even for 4K 30p ProRes, your phone will tell you how much time you're able to capture before you run out of space. And trust me, our internal storage will never be enough. 
So this is my SSD setup right here, which is recommended by iPhone though. And he recommended getting these magnets and cable, which works really well. Now keep in mind though, you do need a fast enough SSD and a cable with a fast enough data throughput or else your videos are gonna come out choppy. And the SSD that I'm using is a two terabyte Samsung T7, which gives us roughly about two hour plus of 4K 60p ProRes raw recording. And what's nice is that you can just plug this attachment into your computer and start editing right away thanks to the USB-C. Don't try to airdrop the footage just because it will take forever. When it comes to exposure, again, I have it at negative 0.7, but for darker scenes, I would actually set it back to zero, zero. Otherwise, it would be too dark and our footage will look too grainy. So we talked about how big the ProRes files are, right? But other filmmakers have actually found out we can actually record in smaller ProRes files with the free Blackmagic camera app, and we can record 4K 60p ProRes internally. And there are a lot of pro features that the Blackmagic camera app has that the stock camera app does not, like zebras, histogram, and false colors. And they aren't necessary to achieve the best footage on an iPhone, but it's nice to have. Again, it's the advantage of being able to shoot smaller ProRes files. But what I also like about this app is that we can also load in our own LUTs to preview while shooting. So let's go ahead and talk about the LUTs that I use. I've purchased and downloaded the ones from LUT Company, and it's actually pretty amazing. This is not an affiliate link, it's not a plug, I don't know the guy, but his sample images are shot in Pasadena, and I'm from Pasadena, so I gotta support my fellow creative Pasadena homie here. But for reals though, I really like the colors, it is $60 for 28 different LUTs, but it's well worth it in my opinion because it saves me a lot of time from having to do my own color grade. And the only adjustments that I would have to do is maybe adjusting my exposure for certain clips if it's a little too bright or too dark, and they're easily correctable because we shot in log. So to edit the videos that we've captured, you have three options on desktop. Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, which are the two that I use, and DaVinci Resolve. And all of these, we can apply the LUTs over our footage easily. But all of them also have pro color grading tools that will allow us to push the color grade even further on our Apple ProRes footage. And all of them are paid software, so definitely keep that in mind. Now, DaVinci Resolve has a free version. It's missing some of the more powerful tools, but if all you're looking to do is just to apply the LUT and do some minor color grading and editing, that might be the better option for you. And one more free app that you can also try that supports LUTs is CapCut. And once again, I will have a free iPhone photography guide that I'm putting together with my friend, Professor Hines, where we take you on a virtual photo walk on achieving amazing images with the iPhone, along with an in-depth photo editing tutorial. So subscribe and follow me on all the social medias to be notified when that guide drops. Thank you guys so much for watching and major thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this helpful guide. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. You don't need any coding knowledge whatsoever. Simply just choose from their many easy to use templates. Perfect for people like us who want to focus on our travels and make YouTube videos for you guys, but still want a presentable website for brands that are looking to work with us. Whether you're building your own photography portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a landing page for your business, design it with Squarespace. Get a 14-day trial with my link below and try it for yourself. When you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with my code, Jason Vaughn. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you guys in our next video. Peace.